I'm Wendy, a relationship specialist. I'd like to welcome you to Love, Listen, Talk, Repeat, a podcast that talks all about relationships. They come in all shapes and sizes, and each one's unique. So in this podcast, I chat with guests about life events and issues that can affect relationships, as well as discussing different types of relationships that may not always fit the mould of being mainstream. There will also be some episodes where it's just me talking about something that may be helpful in your relationship. So for now, just sit back and enjoy. Hello, and it's Wendy again, and today I'm going to be talking to Sue Winsbury. She's a women's empowerment coach and spiritual mentor. So I'm going to hand over to Sue. So please tell us all about yourself, and um, we want to know what that all means and what you do. Thank you, Wendy, and hello. So... um, I've had an interesting journey and I'll start way back when I was sort of in my teens and I was very interested in spirituality and energy and um, reflexology and all that kind of thing but I didn't have anyone to share it with. Um, I wasn't in a what I would call a spiritual family um, so I was very much on my own and it just gradually ebbed away from me because I didn't know where to go with it. I didn't know what to do. So um, I let it go and I sort of conformed to the mainstream as you do or as much as you can possibly do when you're a slightly rebellious teenager anyway. And I, um, I ended up working in PR and marketing and mail order. But I always felt very uncomfortable in myself so I never felt that I fitted in with those environments. Um, I had one little temping stint in a big corporate in organisation, but that really wasn't me. So I've always erred towards smaller businesses, um, but I still didn't feel like I fitted in and I could never pinpoint what it was. I actually just thought it was there was something wrong with me or people didn't like me or I was, um, yeah, just it was me. And it wasn't until after I was very lucky that when I had my children, I could give up work and be a full time mum. And I'm I I'm always very thankful that I had that privilege. And I saw an advertisement and it was very random for a course on spiritual healing. Okay. And that kind of thought, oh, Oh, actually, this is sort of this is igniting something that was sort of there a long time ago. And I decided I'd I didn't know if it worked or not. So the only way to find out was to go and train and see see what happens. And um, I found I could do it. And in fact, anyone can do it when they tap into it and know how. And that really sent me on a completely different journey of um, holistic therapies um, energy work and it's evolved into all the things that I do now I always find it fascinating that we start on a path and it's not always the right one right and sometimes we get diverted intentionally or unintentionally um, and I think for a lot of us we have something deep inside that we are meant to be doing but it can take took me half my lifetime to work out what it was <laughs> Luckily you did. Luckily I did, yes. So the healing then went on into um, lots of holistic therapies, very much hands-on things, but then that's all working with energy. And then I did my Reiki because I wanted to compare that to my previous healing course. And then I went into coaching and women's empowerment and part of my story I guess is why I'm very passionate about women's empowerment right so when you talk about spiritual healing can you can you tell us a bit more about that because I guess there are all kinds of spiritual healing there are there are different yes lots of different 
modalities of healing and I think some people when they hear the word spiritual healing think that you have to have um, a belief in God or for some people they'll think it's anti-religion um, but to me it's all about just using the energy of the universe and we're all surrounded by energy um, and Reiki uses energy and as a, a healer or um, an energy practitioner you are just tapping into what is out there and whoever you're treating they are just their body is doing with it whatever they need to so I don't do the healing I'm just like a transmission body a vehicle okay yeah that makes it, that explains it a little bit more because i think as you say some people believe when you were use the word spiritual they 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 relate it to religion and i guess there are spiritual healers who who do work in that way so i i was just more curious about how you worked so um okay so that sounds really interesting because you've you've done quite a lot of different things haven't you and it's led you to being a women's empowerment coach and what what does that mean what, Tell us more about that side of it. So for me, women's empowerment coaching is helping women really step into their own confidence, um, step into being proud and strong enough to be who they are deep down. And that can be getting to know themselves because I think as women particularly, we're pretty good at losing who we are. Mm -hmm. um, so it's helping women understand who they are, helping them with inner confidence, self-belief, self self-esteem, self um, assertion, learning how not to be people pleasers. Um, <laughs> yeah. yeah, definitely. And all those things were resounding with me, not from just um uh, for my own experience, but also with clients I work with. I always say that, especially when you're a mom. I say that um, once you've delivered the baby and the placenta, there's a whole big package of guilt that gets delivered as well. <laughs> and then you also become, yeah, you set, can lose yourself so easily because you are someone's wife so, or partner or someone's, and someone's mom, and everybody else seems to come before us and yeah. we lose ourselves. Yeah, we, I think we... We're almost pre-programmed to put ourselves at the bottom of the pile. Yeah. And we look after everybody else's needs, wants, desires, happiness. We feel all that responsibility for everyone. And then sometimes we might think about ourselves at the end of it. And quite often, not at all. We just forget to, to look after ourselves. Yeah, I, I would agree. And if we can't look after ourselves first we can't look after anybody else and that's one thing we really have to encourage i encourage my clients i'm sure you do as well yeah i always say you you can't can't pour from an empty cup um you've got to fill up your own cup first yeah and that self-care is not selfish no it's it's not it uh, selfish is about doing things for yourself um where others suffer so in other words you're putting you're, you're somebody else is suffering because of the way you're behaving where self-care isn't uh, that's fundamental as you say that's my view yeah. anyway no yeah. i totally agree it's it's for me it's it's a basic requirement but something that a lot of us have to learn we do don't we <laughs> yeah. i think because we're always told you know as children don't be selfish that's the first thing we get told isn't it? you've got to share your toys you've got to be care, look after somebody else you've got to and I think often children can be told, well, you've got to look after your older, your younger brother or sister or, you know, your, your mum or your dad or your grandma. They put a lot of responsibility on us as children. And I think, I think it starts there. Yeah, I think it starts from very early on. And also watching, you know, how our mums behave. Um, and, you know, my mum would always have the, the smallest piece of meat or whatever or the burnt bit. or And yeah. and I do that with my own kids as well. You know, if, there's, if I've burnt something in the oven, I will all have, I'll always have the, the burny bit and give them <laughs> the best bit. 
<laughs> yeah, what does that say? Yeah. What, does that te- <laughs> what does that teach them as well? It's, yeah. Oh. So what would you say are the key elements of that self-love and that self-care? So for me, first and foremost, I would say getting to know what your values are and learning how to really honour those and build them into your daily life. Because I know, gosh, for years and years, I didn't, even, I didn't know what my values were. I didn't even, I hadn't even heard of the concept. You know, I was just kind of bumbling along, being a mum, being a wife, doing my thing. Yeah. And suddenly sort of the concept in fact it was when my marriage was breaking down that we started looking at values and I was like oh I I don't know I don't know what these things are right and I think when you learn to understand what those are and they they are kind of your core beliefs are at the very heart of you and when we don't honor them then we're not feeling good in ourselves to begin with I so agree with you. And I know that when I ask people, well, what are your core beliefs and values? They look at me blankly as if I don't know what you're talking about. But I, I really believe, I think we know them, but we just can't put them into words sometimes. It's formulating them, isn't it? It is. Yeah. Well, yes, I really believe in honesty and truth, or I believe you know, we should care for our planet or, or whatever the a myriad of different things that they can be, our integrity, our everything that, that makes us the person we are. Yeah, yeah. And it's just when you start thinking about them, and what, well, what is it that's important to me in my, in my life? People don't. They don't stop and think about it. As you say, they bumble along. And I did the same for so many years. I knew deep down what was important for me. But I'd never actually formulated it or really thought about it. Yeah, consciously thinking and then and then yeah, thinking about how we're actually respecting those values and honouring them in our day to day life. Yeah. And I had uh, I was working with a a client who's in a very very unhappy, very difficult marriage, and we were working through her values. And it was, it was a fascinating process. And one of them that came up was actually God. And when she was growing up, she had, um, she'd been involved in a church. So she'd had a lovely sense of community and support and um, love and care and all that's kind of what I would call soul nurture. Yeah. And she's married to what can probably be described as a very narcissistic kind of man um doesn't believe in religion Mm. he wasn't allowed to have her children christened um (laughs) and and it was only sort of when we went through this and she suddenly looked and she went oh my goodness and I said well where where is God in your life at the moment she's just like it's it's not really featuring and and then she started to realize how she she missed that community of like-minded people um and so we could start put, to put things in place for her to experience that in her current life. But she hadn't realised what a big part of her it was. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I, I certainly believe in the fact that, you know, when I'm working with couples um, or individuals about their relationship, what are your core beliefs and values? And what are your partners? And how much in line are they? Because as you said, that was so, so illustrative of, of the being completely with your client, with it being completely out of, out of alignment. And some things we can cope with as long as an acceptance, if her partner had, a, you know, allowed or accepted and that side of her. But, but if it's not, then it causes very, very upset and, and so much friction in relationship. Yeah. Yeah, totally. And that deep unhappiness that sort of needs to be resolved somehow or another. Yeah. I'm glad she found what she needed. Yeah. There's still things for her to work on, but (laughs) piece by piece. Yeah, absolutely. And I think sometimes people, they expect overnight 
results and they think it's all going to happen overnight and it doesn't does it because we're we're programmed and um therefore to, to to kind of re get re in, al in alignment again um, realigned again sorry um it, yeah it takes a while doesn't it I can't yeah have yeah it's not it's not um it's not a click your fingers and it's all done the next day no so you talked about the fact that you your relationship broke down yeah. with reference to it. Yeah. So what happened to you in that? So I I over the course I was with my husband for sixteen years altogether. Hi. And um I just gradually lost all sense of who I really was. Um I was never a particularly confident teen or 20 something. Um, and my husband was a very, very gregarious, very outgoing, party loving, very, very social um, person. And, right. you know, he had, a, he had a big personality. And I guess I just went into the shadows even more than I had been because he had such this huge fun personality and we had we had a lot of great times we had a lot of um you know great parties we had a fantastic social life so there were many many pluses but i also looking back i i began to shrink oh, really? behind that hugeness um and it was it was something that i didn't even see happening at the time it's a bit i always think it's a bit like a drip feed yeah. is that it's such a slow erosion that you don't particularly notice it. Mm. And every so often something will kind of pop up in me and think, oh, what's, what's happening to me? But it, it wasn't enough in my awareness to do anything about it. Oh, and that's such a shame because actually the two of you complimented each other. And if only it had been in both your awareness and you could have you know, acknowledged it, had been aware and, and supported and helped each other. How brilliant that would have been. Yeah, I think, unfortunately, we sort of, we went the other way. So he, yeah. got, he got probably more frustrated with um, my shrinking. And, and so in his trying to help things, I felt it as pressure yeah. and control and force. So then I would retreat even further. Mm. And he would then try and force things more. And so we just kind of, we, we went in the wrong directions. Yeah, locking horns instead of being yeah. supportive. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's, that's a shame, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. So you really lost your sense of self. What did it feel like when you realised all of that? Uh, I felt very, I felt very empty, mm. um, emotionally numb. So I kind of yeah. had forgotten how to feel things and that was I get the highs as well as the lows because I think I just kind of shut off from everything. So if you don't, if you don't feel things, then you don't feel pain. Yeah. So um, it, there was an emotional shutdown. Um, and I was also a little bit annoyed with myself for letting it happen because I have oh. to take responsibility as well. Yeah. Um, so yeah, kind of when I, when I started to wake up to what was, what had happened, I was a bit frustrated with myself that I'd even allowed that to go on. Yeah. And I think there is something, isn't there about that when we come to that realization that we played a part in it, um, to start with, it's so easy to blame the other person totally. I know I've done that myself. Um, but then when you've had time to percolate all those feelings and then you realize well actually what part did I play in that yeah so yeah and I, I did quite, play a part and it's quite a wake-up call isn't it <laughs> it's, it's a little bit of a oops <laughs> yeah and not easy to acknowledge when it first happens because we I think I've done it myself and it's also easy to, I see it with others, you know, they, they immediately say, well, it was them. It was all their fault. Um, it, they're the ones to blame. They were awful, but actually they don't recognize that 
and none of us recognize it immediately do we it takes a little no. while and takes some humility to go ouch yes <laughs> I think the blame game is so much easier. <laughs> it's much, it's it? much simpler. Just heap the responsibility on somebody else and, um, you know, walk away. <laughs> it wasn't me, it was them. But there's always two parts to it. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, I think my ex-husband, he's, he's sort of, he's recognised his, his role as well. Um, and we are still amicable. Oh, how lovely is that? Because that doesn't happen very often. No, we we worked very hard at maintaining a a good relationship because we had young children. It was really important, and we both came from divorced families ourselves. Mm. So we could we knew how for us it was essential that we maintain that relationship. Yeah, not saying it was easy at all times, but. <laughs> Well, we no, it. but life isn't easy, is it? I mean, no. let's face it. You know, people think that when they first meet and get together, it's all going to be um, champagne and roses. And unfortunately, that's not how life is. No. Um, so therefore, parting from a, yeah, from a relationship is not going to be easy either. So yeah, well done you though for working through it because that takes a lot of. It takes a lot of energy, which you work with, which is brilliant. <laughs> and, and, yeah, self-acknowledgement. So, yeah, that's great. Great to hear that lovely story instead of the ones I often hear where, you know, they just can't bear the sight of each other and everybody suffers. Could easily have gone that way. It was a bit of a tightrope at times, but, um, yeah, and it's, I'm proud of, of what we've managed. You should be. I yeah. think you should be very proud of yourselves. Yeah. <laughs> so how much of, um, going back to the self-love, how much of that is important in, in a relationship? Because I got the sense that when you talked, you, you'd, as losing yourself, maybe you just didn't even know about loving yourself. It didn't come into the equation. <laughs> no, and I don't think I even really like myself. Really? No, and I think... When I when I was growing up, because I was not terribly confident, um, and because I always felt like I was a bit of an outsider, I yeah, I don't think I liked myself growing up. Okay. So it was just sort of, and that's quite hard when you don't like yourself. And I think there's a lot of people that feel that way, but don't know that's how they feel. Yeah. So learning to like and then love myself was a big part of my healing process. Yes. And I think that when we get those negative messages coming through as children, whether it's from parents, siblings, friends, teachers, wherever, um, authorities, or whoever, um, it's hard then to, to begin to like ourselves because I grew up feeling not good enough mm. and therefore I didn't fit in I didn't like myself particularly and um, it took me a long time <laughs> to, to say well actually I am good enough I am okay and then there was acceptance and then you have to move on to the self-love I think it's it's that journey isn't it yeah going through yeah. it and I think that that sense of not good enough I see in so many women that I work with and even sort of just from things that I do sort of in my marketing and, and comments and just the number of people that kind of go, I know I'm not good enough or I don't feel good enough. And it's just, it's epidemic. It is. Yeah. Yeah. I'd agree with you. Sadly. Mm. Yeah. It's very sad, isn't it? That, uh, so many people feel that way that they just don't match up to external forces because <laughs> that's all it is it's living yeah. up to those shoulds but and oughts I mean they're three words I'd love to ban from the English language. <laughs> I agree <laughs> when I rule the world <laughs> I'm gonna ban them there will be no shoulds <laughs> uh, I think it's much nicer to say want and yeah. need and would like um, rather than those, those, that critical parent inside our head. 
Well, they're all, they're loaded, loaded words. They all come with pressure, don't they? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And that, yeah, they're going to put us down from the start because we're going to fail. We should have done that. Oh, right. And I haven't. Now I'm a failure. (laughs) And I think I was listening to someone the other day and they were saying that when we're at school, I think so much of this comes from being at school because it's, you know, you're, you're good or you're bad. Yeah. You, you pass or you fail yeah. you know you you succeed or you don't isn't it? it's all that it's very very black and white and, and what do we succeed at or fail at well exactly <laughs> <laughs> you know if you're not if you're not academic well you're not academic but it doesn't mean you're a failure in life no and we need you know you'll be you will be amazing at something else and we all have our own strengths and and weaknesses and you know my my drawing is probably at the level of a five-year-old I can't catch a ball (laughs) just but I can do other things exactly and I think that's the problem isn't it you're told as you said at school you're a failure if you don't pass the exam you're a failure but whose whose standards are they exactly isn't it yeah and we're, yes. we're all individual beings. And I think the more we learn to embrace that, then um, the happier everybody can be. Yeah. So that's obviously what you help and you by empowering these women that you work with. It's my aim to <laughs> help women understand that they are unique and perfect in their uniqueness and um, we're all to just be authentic yes because that's that's what we all need and it's not about pretending to be somebody else and I've pretended and you know I've shown up as somebody else trying to fit in um, Mm. or mold myself to different environments and we don't feel comfortable when we do that no no because we we don't know who we are when we're trying to be what we think others want us to be, well, we're, as you say, not being authentic, but we lose ourselves entirely. Yeah. So when we try to be what we think we should be as a wife, as a partner, um, as a friend, as a mother, as a, an employee, but we're not being ourselves. And then therefore we don't know who we are and how can we then fit in or yes, fit into what we want to be within those relationships yeah and we get so busy molding ourselves into what we think everybody's expecting that we yeah we get lost yes and i can remember when i was a lot younger being criticized somebody said stop trying so hard and i felt really put down i thought i'm just trying to i'm just trying to do what i think that person wants of me it was in a job situation Mm. in a work situation and I couldn't understand what they meant you know they said you try you're trying too hard stop stop trying too hard well what does that mean and I it wasn't a, a good enough relationship to ask that person but then I remember some time later I was in the company of somebody who was a complete people pleaser and you could see that they felt so anxious and uncomfortable and just didn't know who they were. They were just trying to please. And I felt absolutely really un- so uncomfortable in, in their company. Mm. And, it, uh, and it was that point I realised what I'd been doing. But I hadn't realised the effect it had on other people. It's fascinating, isn't it? That was really, really interesting. And I do think, um, because a lot of my clients are people pleasers, and that's how it, I guess, it it boils down to self-esteem. Yeah. But also we disempower other people when we're trying to please them because we we think we're doing it to help them or to do the right thing, but actually we are taking away their own power. Yeah. Yeah. I, I felt all at sea with this particular person. I just felt completely uncomfortable and I, I didn't know where to go. And it, it was 
and it wasn't me being the people pleaser. It was <laughs> on the receiving end. It was oh, this is this feels really awful. Yeah, yeah. So it's quite interesting, isn't it, when you're both sat on both sides? But <laughs> yes. I think you have to maybe experience that to understand it a little bit more. What it's like when when we do try and please others, because yeah, in relationships, how on earth can we? make a successful relationship if we're trying to be what we think the other person wants us to be yeah and i think it's it's also important to recognize that there's a difference between being a people pleaser but also wanting to please your partner in um in a more gracious sense in a more partnership sense yeah they're they're two completely different things absolutely i think it's something about giving and being from an authentic point of view, I love this person, therefore I want to do that for them because yeah. um, it, it's, it's putting something into the relationship and enriching it rather than, well, I better do this because um, it, it, it will make them feel happier about it. And I can remember that in a relationship where I felt so controlled, I was constantly walking on eggshells and trying to do the right thing so that they would stop bullying me. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, that becomes, I've done the same and it becomes very uncomfortable. Um, and not great for the other person. No, no, because they're never going to be satisfied. They're all at sea because they, although I think, I don't think they understand necessarily. It's not in their awareness, but for somehow they, it's like their foundations aren't solid because they're well. Why are they doing that? Or, or I haven't got enough. Or what is it that? I don't know. It's a very different feeling, but definitely they buy into it as well, don't they? And yeah. Therefore, you you can never please them, and they they're never going to be satisfied. Very very toxic. <laughs> very toxic. <laughs> So what do you see as a, where, where, where's the place for um, energy within a relationship? So, so energy to me plays a huge, huge part in relationships. And we all have, um, our hearts radiate an electromagnetic field. So this is a sciencey bit. It's not just woo-woo. A lot of people think, oh, it's just a bit of a spiritual woo, but it's, it's, it's a proven science. Um, we have this energy field that comes out from our hearts and it can extend up to 20 feet, which I think is about eight meters. So it's, it's huge. Yeah. And so obviously we're all interacting with everybody else's heart energy all the time. And I see a lot of people who are in, when they're in difficult relationships, the energy that they are taking into that is almost quite prickly and spiky because they're, they're going in with, um, he's not doing this for me or she, she's not meeting my needs or, oh, I really, I, I don't like, I don't like it when they do that or I don't even like them. Mm. you know sometimes it can be at that stage um or they're really winding me up all these negative thoughts that we take in but it makes it almost makes that energy very very prickly and spiky so the other person is sensing on this subconscious level this prickly spiky kind of energy and then they're reacting to it so energetically we are um just butting up against each other and reacting in a very negative state and the other sort of element of that is that we all um, because we are all made of energy uh, we are just energy particles everything is made of energy and we all have a different energetic vibration Mm. and the um the more negative emotions tend to keep us on a lower vibration so things like hatred jealousy um anger frustration all of those what i would call negative emotions are quite a low vibration Mm. 
So we are, we're taking in that whole energy field of, I call it dark energy, murky energy into our relationships. And it can be, you know, whether it's a relationship with a partner, it can be a work relationship um, with friends, it, you know, it can be any kind of relationship. But people will pick up on it, but not mm. consciously know what they're sensing. Whereas when people shift that and learn to take in um, a more loving energy on a very subtle way, it completely shifts the dynamics of a relationship. Yeah. I, I, I'm very aware of energies in that respect because if I'm in the company of somebody who is, has got low energy, I can actually get a sense of my heart sinking. Yeah. I can feel the energy um, lowering in the room. It really does. It becomes so heavy. Yeah. And I'm sure, you know, most people at some point have walked into a room, you know, perhaps if there's been an argument that's gone on beforehand and you walk into the room and, and we instantly kind of go, oh, what's gone on here? Or, oh, there's a little sense of, and that's your, yeah, your heart energy picking up on yeah. what's going on. And people will say, I can sense an atmosphere. Yeah. And I guess the atmosphere is affected, isn't it? Because we're giving it out. All the time. Yeah. So and I always it's... say to people, you know, when you're, if you're having difficulties with somebody, what energy are you taking into that in the first place? Yeah. Because again, it comes down to the blame and it's the other person, da di da di da but, but what are we actually taking into it ourselves? Definitely. And I think that's, that's where it happens uh, so easily, doesn't it? Because we sense, we sense something of somebody else, um, their attitude towards us or something they've said or the energy that they've got. We pick up on it and then that immediately makes us step back. Yeah. And so then we are taking that negative energy back into the relationship. Yeah. And then it's, it's hard to bring the relationship back up. So even if you're working on things on a, a more conscious level, if you're still taking that stuff in, yeah, it's, it's a bit of an uphill, <laughs> it's an uphill <laughs> bit of a battle really. Cause you've got, it's got to, it's got to come on two levels, I think. Yes. Yeah, so it's, it's for us to break it so that we, yes, we, we accept that, that we, we've played that part in it again, isn't it? It's taking yeah. responsibility and saying, hold on a minute, we can't put this on the other person all the time. What are we taking into that conversation, into that room, into that relationship? Yeah. Yeah, and that kind of leads me on to the way that we shift that. And one of the biggest things for me is uh, forgiveness right and a lot of people when I say talk about forgiveness they they instantly (laughs) kind of look quite affronted and I will say no no can't can't even entertain forgiving the other person but for me forgiveness is not about Owning somebody else's behavior or attitudes or anything because when we don't forgive we are tending to hold on to negative energy so it may be um I don't know, as a woman i know that i i'm quite good at harboring things that <laughs> happened quite a long time ago <laughs> And I think this is a, a pretty good female trait that we, you know, we do hang on to stuff and we can, we can remember arguments from oh, probably even years ago. <laughs> yeah. But we, if we hold on to those emotions, the only person it's actually harming is, is us. Mm. It's not, it's not doing anything to the other person. No. And maybe um, I think sometimes people see it as forgiving the person rather than forgiving the behavior 
Yeah, and as I said, it's There's not a, a isn't there? there is a very, very big difference, and it's not about as a, that's why I say it's not about letting, not about condoning whatever's happened. No, it, it's about setting yourself free from the anger or the bitterness or yeah. um, the negative emotions that you feel about it. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I completely agree with you. And I think sometimes if we can say, well, I think what you did or your behavior, I will never forgive that, but I can forgive you as a person. Mm. Maybe, maybe that way around is, is a better way of looking at it. Yeah. I think for me, I can do that. Okay. I, what you did to me, whatever uh, your behavior was or your actions, that really wasn't acceptable, but you're a human being. And I, I can, you know, accept that you're, you are that human being and you didn't mean it. And therefore, as a person, I can forgive you. Yeah. And it's, it's not going to, it doesn't change it doesn't. anything about what's happened. Um, for me, it's just very freeing for myself. Yeah. Letting it go. Yeah. Because the longer we hold on to it, the, the more it eats into us. And you're so right. I think this is it. it damages us more than it damages anybody else. Yeah, completely. And that isn't helpful at all. So yeah, just letting it go. Doesn't mean you can't be cross. Doesn't mean you can't be angry. Doesn't mean you can't <laughs> like it. None of that. But just freeing ourselves up. Yeah, yeah. And it's. I know this is quite a difficult concept for people to get their heads around, particularly if they've been very badly hurt or badly treated. Um, yeah. But it's, yeah, it's about the self rather than the other one. Yeah. Yeah, so very true. And I think there's nothing worse than that embitterment because it just does. It destroys and I think it manifests itself, um, not emotionally, but also physically. Yeah. You can get really, um, suffer with all kinds of problems, emotional and physical, simply because they're harboring that. Yeah, I mean, emotions very definitely get stuck in our bodies yeah and anyone who's had um, a massage or anything like that and then burst into tears at the end of it um and i i know it happened to me and um we were we were at a family barbecue and my mum just walked by and gave my shoulders a little bit of a rub and a massage because i always used to get very knotty shoulders yeah and i suddenly burst into tears and it wasn't just a little cry it was monumental sobs. Wow. <laughs> and my mum sort of said, I hurt you. And I said, no, it doesn't hurt at all. <laughs> and I went into the, into the bathroom and tried to pull myself together. And I think I sobbed for about 45 minutes. Really? And yeah, it was, and that was the first time I'd really come across sort of such a, a, a release from something physical. So, um, yeah, we very much hold on to things in our in our physical body. Yeah. As well as emotionally and, and energetically. Yeah. So very true. And I was going to ask you of, of, of an example of where that happened, but you've just given a personal one. <laughs> I think that's that's amazing that you know that that change in energy. But have have you got any others that you wanted to share? Um Yes, I'm actually I'm working with somebody at the moment, and again, it's it is a very toxic relationship. Um, that toxicity is very very evident in her physical body, um, but she was very very spiky whenever she talked about her husband, and some some of it's justified. You know, it's not an easy relationship. But I said, can we just have a think about what your taking in you're taking that into your home you're taking that into your relationship with your with your husband and with your children and she she's gradually learning how to soften it and be more um more compassionate more understanding um it and it is shifting the dynamics it's not it's not a relationship that I think is going to heal or repair, but it is in the temporary interim, it is definitely changing how they behave towards each other. And it's very subtle, mm. but even in, even in her voice, I can hear 
that her voice has changed. Okay. Because she's, it's just, it's, it's softened and become more gentle and, um, you know, he's, he's responding in a more positive way towards her. And it's just because she's sort of changed instead of kind of, it's a bit like going in as a hedgehog, you know, I, it's just all this prickly, prickly stuff. Um, but she's just softening around the edges and it is changing. And that's it. Cause we can't change anybody else. We can't change their yeah. thoughts, their actions, behaviors, anything. But by making those changes within ourselves, we do elicit changes in others. And it's quite incredible. Yeah. In my work too, I find exactly the same. We just, we have different approaches, but I think, you know, we, our outcomes are very much the same, aren't they? Yeah, it has to, it can only start with who we are. Exactly. It is about, yeah, as you say, loving ourselves and, and learning about ourselves and, yeah, being more aware of our values and core beliefs, as you said. Yeah. Yeah. And just respecting, giving yourself the respect and the love to, to do all of that. Yes. Yeah. And if we don't like ourselves, how can we begin to <laughs> do anything at all? Because we're so, we're so focused on how upset, angry or disappointed we are then how on earth can we function in the world with love and, and, and understanding of others? And how do we expect other people to like us? No, we can't, can we? We don't like ourselves. Exactly. You know, we, we attract what we give out. Oh, don't we just? So when we give out that, you know, that, that like and that self-love, and um, that's what we attract more of. Totally. Totally agree with you. Yeah, and then we attract more of like-minded people within our lives, which is what we really want, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. It's been absolutely lovely talking to you today. I've really enjoyed it. I hope you've enjoyed it too as well, So, um, And I just, how can people get in touch with you? They'd like, um, to, like to learn more. I'm going to put all the details in the show notes. Okay. But there may be somebody who's just listening while they're walking or driving the car. So can you just give some information about how people can get in touch with you and learn more? Yeah, definitely. I'd love to. And thank you so much. It's been a, an absolute joy talking to you too. Um, so you can find me, um, uh, my web website is www.suewinsbury.com and it's Sue without an E right. and Winsbury without a D. <laughs> so it's... <laughs> It's okay. S U W I N S B U R Y. Um, I'm on Facebook, so um, I'm quite happy for people to find me on Facebook. Um, I have a business page and a personal page. I have a Facebook group for women, which is called Awaken the Woman Within. And that's um, all about sort of mind, body, soul, um, waking up the woman inside. Great. So very, very happy for people to come in and join me in there as well. Fabulous. Okay. Um, thank you for that. And uh, yes, thank you again. Thank you so much for sharing all your insights with us today. Thank you, Wendy. It's been great. I really hope you enjoyed the podcast and you can find all the details of this episode in the show notes. If you've enjoyed it, then why not leave a review so that others can find the podcast more easily? You'll find all the details that I mentioned in the show, in the show notes, as well as links to my website, where you can find lots more information and links to other resources. My contact details are there too. If you'd like to receive my newsletter, which contains articles and my latest offers, then why not just email me? It's wendy at yourrelationshipspecialist.co.uk. Details are in the show notes.